we wouldn't do it. Um, but at that time, we didn't have an office. There was there was no other choice here. <laughs> you could meet at, at a corner or or just at my house. Um, and, and actually, um, before I get to the interview, one thing that really impressed me on Elon was actually he, he came to LA um, and he lived in Palo Alto. That's a, an hour flight north or, or five hours of drive. And I asked him why is he coming to LA? Um, because I had I had I had, um, I had some experience with other people that build rocket companies like Andy Beal. And then these people would say, okay, I got the money. I live in, in Fredericksburg in, uh, in Texas. We built the rocket factory here. Yeah? And Elon said something totally different. He said, um, I, I live in Palo Alto, but I know the talent is in Los Angeles for, for rockets, so I'm going to Los Angeles. Yeah? And I thought, wow, actually, that's, that's A, it's logical, and B, it's actually pretty smart because it's just one guy moving and, and not a thousand guys moving you know, at, the, at the end of the day. So I, I, he, he really impressed me with that, with that because it, tell, it told me he means it really serious. It's not just money being invested for him. No, he actually wants it. Um, what was the question again? Oh, the interview. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I would think first of all, I don't think he interviews anymore. You know? So, um, but he would basically ask riddles. Um, and, uh, and I do the same thing, by the way. I, I, do, I do ask Riddle. I'm not going to tell you about Riddle because then I'm going to find it on the internet and then it will be lost forever. <laughs> but what I, what I like to find is I like to find a Riddle that is um, testing your basic understanding and knowledge and lets me see how you work through something. Yeah? And, and it's really amazing. Um, a simple riddle is, is, is typically best, um, something that you have to work on for like two or three minutes. And then there are people that are giving up, and there's people that basically just think and then come out with the answer. There's people that need paper, there's people that uh, run the wrong way, and I pull them back and pull them the right way. So I, I want to test a little bit on how people work, how they cooperate, if they, if they listen to me. Then I say, you know what, I would probably do this as a table, and then I go, okay. So that's, that's basically what I'm trying to find out. Um, Fundamentally, we look for basic, basic physics, good basic physics. Um, I always ask about mutation and um, and um, recession, uh, angular momentum. Also, um, so that, that those are the the, the key, um, and that tells me a lot about if somebody knows physics or or um, it doesn't. Basically. So yeah. I strongly hope I'd be able to answer those questions, even though I'm not convinced. So, what was your goal going to SpaceX, and how did those fit with the goals of SpaceX itself? So, I um, I had worked on a small satellite here in, 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 in at, at SARM in Bremen, and I learned a lot working on a small satellite and a small team, and and so I also realized that the satellite is as as much fun as the satellite is. It's actually useless if you don't launch it. So the launch is actually more important than the satellite. And and um, and so my goal, if I had any, was actually to build a small launcher. And um, I didn't want to build a small launcher. Um, in the past, um, this has been like the job of countries. Yeah? And um, you know, there's 10,000 people that work on Atlas and, and, and these launchers, and they they've succeeded building them. Um, and here we are in a small company, and so my goal was basically see if we can build a small launcher with a small company. You know? And I must say, don't pick your goals too low, like I did. That is just not good, <laughs> because then you end up <laughs> you end up doing your goal, and then you go, huh, what's next? Yeah. So <laughs> just shoot a little bit higher than what you can do. That's that's typically a, a, a really good, uh, good uh, thing to do. Now the, the company's goal was always to go to Mars. Yeah, and, and the goal was pretty uh, a little bit higher up than the, the small launcher was to make humanity into not into multiplanetary is the, the, the right word, yeah. So or enable humanity to be multiplanetary, yeah. And the logic behind that is actually brilliant and makes perfect sense to to an engineer at least, yeah. Um, something can happen to this planet. We don't have total control, asteroids, volcanoes, whatever, ourselves. And, um, and and we, we might just need a backup, yeah? and the next backup or the only backup really is actually Mars, and so that's why why we're interested in Mars and trying to build up civilization on Mars. The, the other thing is basically is also the next step, yeah? and I'm adding this a little bit to it. If you look at at what uh, 
put them over ants to, uh, you know, for whatever population of animals, they go to the next spot, right? And there are spots where they survive and there are spots where they don't survive. And that's basically largely described as evolution. Right? So in my opinion, the next step is just simply to go out and, and try if you can see on, uh, if you can live on Mars. And it's gonna it's gonna be like a if you look at it like in a, in a, in a um, sped up way you will see like a ship and then back and then two ships or maybe three ships and then more traffic between the two planets yeah? and then suddenly suddenly maybe a hundred years later this is a really uh, you know <laughs> living living planet so that's how I envision it at least yeah? and um, yeah so that goal is the next goal basically and it's a little bit higher than the small rocket. I assume working for Elon Musk, the goals will never be too few ambitious for, for people like you to work for. Um, so there is the question of also going to the moon in between before going to Mars. What's your stand on that? Um, sure, why not? Um, <laughs> well, if, so, so if you look at the design that we have um, on, on, on BFR, the next rocket, or Actually, in general, what we try to do is we try to land propulsively. Um, and if you have propulsive landing, you, it doesn't matter if you land on Moon or on Mars. Actually, you have the ability to do either one. Yeah? So we are we are looking at the Moon. Uh, we are looking at going around the Moon. There was an announcement we had last week about um, uh, Yusaka Maisawa, I think is his name, and and he, he basically uh, booked the first flight on BFR around the moon. Um, I think that's, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's uh, pretty forward thinking for somebody um, um, like him. And uh, I mean, he calls himself a dreamer. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's great to do this. Um, and um, I'm not sure where I was going through that. <laughs> okay, right, moon, yes. Yes, yes so moon. So I, I personally actually think I'm not totally convinced the moon is the better goal. Yeah, I know that Europe is looking at the moon a little bit closer, and I know that um, other countries are too. So, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the moon is the right place. Um, to some extent, we, we build a vehicle and we will fly, you know, wherever somebody wants us to fly with the vehicle. If it's the moon, great. Why not? Okay, thank you very much. So now that we've already talked about the um, diverted a bit from the path of your personal um, endeavor, maybe. Could you tell us something about Falcon Heavy and what the plans are with that? Yeah, sure. So we had a... Um, actually, I have a little video of that. Um, I actually used it. So we had a... It would start here. Yeah. Um, I could probably talk over it. Um, I hope there's no sound on it. Oh, there's the other one. <laughs> yeah, just pick one for Let's see. Let's see. Is this... Um... Oh, this one. Okay, let's see this one. Yeah. So this is the, um, the the launch we had uh, in February on Falcon Heavy. So Falcon Heavy has um, it's like three co three cores, uh, a center core and two side cores. And one of the um, the interesting parts is we recover our our side cores, and so they fly back to the launch site. And here we have two side cores. One is flying um, very close to the other one. They're slightly different in pitch, so that they don't touch each other. But um, they are actually so close that you can see one in the other picture and that is the one thing that I find really this actually is on, on the um, on YouTube it's a it's a public video and what you see there is the the lower two are the side cores and the upper one is the the center core actually the, uh, the left one is the center core and the right one is the second stage so um, I I haven't really thought this through but um, I realized wow we actually have like a full media I mean, there's like four things happening on the screen all at the same time. It's a lot of activity, right? <laughs> the good part then is that we actually have nothing in there. I mean, this is all programmed. We have there's no no human interaction there because it would be terribly confusing. Um, I think in this in the lower one you can see the other booster. Uh, I thought it's in this one actually. So this is flying back to Florida now. You can you can see part of the coastline there. Um, this other one, the, the other one is flying forward and landing on the drone ship. Um, they don't they don't land at the same time. I think the two land boosters land land first. Uh, the two side boosters land first. Um, anyway, so Falcon Heavy launched a uh, a car, a Tesla. Um, <laughs> We, 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 we needed to explain that a little bit because when you launch a rocket the first time you don't put a satellite on there. Yeah? 
um, unless you're we did we put satellites on the first rockets on the first three rockets and we blew up all three and so every time after that I went to the customer and told them oh there it is you see the other one the left one that's the burn that's the, the, the that's the right booster in the head field of view yeah I don't, I don't really like that <laughs> this one is also a little bit uh, uh, perverse because of the uh, the web quality so I got the I got the original it's slightly better um, where was I? Oh, the car. Oh, right. Okay. So, so you you just don't launch satellites. I mean, um, that's not 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 cool to blow them up um, on the first time. And then on the other side, what people do is they launch um, a piece of metal, like a like a mass simulator. Yeah. So the odd part is when we launched the mass simulator, that thing went to orbit. Cool. Yeah. No problem. So now we have a mass simulator in orbit and three satellites on the ground. <laughs> Whatever you do is not, it's just the wrong thing. So in any case, we decided we will not launch a satellite, we will not go through this, we will launch something that is basically not of value. And the car is basically not of value, it's Elon's old car, so we just uh, took the battery out and, uh, and launched it. And it had actually, it was more like uh, as an inspiration. Yeah? And people associate two cars that uh, come down. You can see, you can see a little bit on how fast the landing is. Um, it's just incredible. It was not. It was not planned to land them both at the same time. It just happened the two landing sites were just at the right distance, so they landed at the same time. And it does look a little bit like fake, right? Does it? <laughs> it's great what you can do these days. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So anyway, so that's the story of the car, and and and, and honestly, the way we planned it. Or it, it worked better than I ever imagined. It was uh, it was an inspiration for many people. Um, the um, the astronaut in there, or the, the, the dummy basically in there, looked really cool, and the pictures were so cool. Uh, <laughs> they were so good that we got dinged by Noah over the quality of the pictures, <laughs> and we have to fill out licenses now. <laughs> but um, and anyway, so Falcon Heavy will be the um, the, the heavy heavy launcher. Um, it's mostly a government mission that has an avid interest. In Falcon Heavy, there's a few, there's a few geo birds, geo, trans, geo, geo um, stationary satellites. That's why we call them geo birds. Um, that are heavy enough to to justify a Falcon Heavy, but it's, it's really just a few, and uh, it's mostly for government payloads, for big government payloads. Huh? Um, we we will see if we go interplanetary with Falcon Heavy. We can, um, but for us, actually, the next step is going to go forward and, and, and start developing the BFR. Big part and work, as you know. <laughs> Great, yes, this would have been my next question. So what are the what are the developments on BFR and can you tell us something um, on why it makes sense to make a completely new equipment development after the Falcon Heavy now? So, so um, Falcon Heavy or Falcon 9 in both cases they are still too small to get to Mars. You need more. You need more lift capability to go to Mars. So you would, you would end up with like a dozen Falcon Heavies and so on and so forth. And and um, the second problem is actually the upper stages right now are not reusable. Reusable right now. They're hard to get down. Basically, it's something that we we quietly work on. I mean, it's we're looking at it basically, but it's a hard problem to get a second stage down. You can't go engine first, you can't go the other side first, you have to figure out which way to go. At, at the end of the day, I think BFR solves the problem by making, uh, by putting a, a second stage on there that can actually um, re-enter and, and, and land on, on the ground again, again uh, vertical. Uh, we call it the, uh, the Big Falcon Spaceship, it's BFS, um, very close to BFR, and, uh, and, and it's basically designed to be reusable right from the get-go. And so. One of the tricks really is then um, what you would do is you would launch a you would launch a BFR. You would basically um, you have now an empty empty BFS in, in space, yeah, and you would you would start basically refueling it in orbit. You know, and you can assemble your rocket basically then in orbit, and you go you go from there to Mars. Now that gives you the ability to go straight to Mars, basically but not straight. I mean, you, would, you still have a transfer orbit, but you do go go more than straight to Mars, and you have enough propellant left. So you can actually re-enter on, on, on Mars and do the landing there. So that's that is the idea behind BFR. That's that's what, what our next step is. 
and um, we we started building um, big elements. We we have a tank. Um, we tested the tank. We test. Uh, um, we're working on the on the first stage. Um, it's it's really hard to do these structures. I mean the. Uh, um, I think it's basically from this wall to that wall. That's roughly the diameter of the of the vehicle. It's huge. It's a, it's in a place. It's actually um, so. I live in I live at the at the harbor or near the harbor in San Pedro, and um, SpaceX facility is in Hawthorne, which is a 20 mile ride every day. Now this new facility is actually in San Pedro. I can just uh, I can just it's, it's across the channel, so I have to I have to row over the channel, but I can still <laughs> still be at work in probably 50 minutes and not in 45. Helps me a lot. Um, but it's, it's pretty impressive. It's a it's a very big, uh, very big. Uh, right now, it's just a barrel section and a dome, um, and we're trying to learn on how to make big uh, composite structures. Uh, that's basically the key, the key thing we need to learn for for the PFR. Oh, I do want to say something too. So um, Falcon Heavy, nobody paid us to make Falcon Heavy. You know, there was no government that said, "Hey, I want Falcon Heavy. Please build it for me." Yeah? Um, we, we we actually built Falcon Heavy, and to some extent. The government almost came to us and said, "Well, what you're building there, you want to get in there. Uh, you want to, you want to be part of that." And um, <laughs> it was really interesting dynamics because we said, "No, we just want to build it, and uh, you can buy it when it's ready, and uh, and we and we, we charge you for 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 the service, and, and that's pretty much it." You know, it's. Uh, I'm saying this for two reasons. Number one, um, it's a great position to, to do this. Yeah, you got to, obviously you got to find the money for this. You got to know people that have money. And that, that are uh, willing to invest in, in, in your company, and we, we have been lucky enough to, to know those those people, and um, so that is something that is fundamentally different between the U.S. and and, and, and Europe. Although you do have um, venture capital in here too, it's starting to, to come up. So this is something where you need to uh, look for basically, and not try to get the money from the government, because otherwise government will tell you what to build, how to build it. Sorry, there's, there's no legs. Nothing goes on there. Yeah, whatever it is, yeah, they will tell you how to build this, and and, and that's just not uh, not always. I mean, for some things, it's the best thing to do, but in others, it's it's actually not. Depends on what it is. Great, thank you very much. Um, you mentioned that you want to refuel them in orbit, so obviously reusability is a big issue. Could you comment on that and how it affects the performance of the rockets? So um, the. There's several parts to reuse reusability. Um, one of them is obviously you need to get through the atmosphere, so you need to have a heat shield. And um, and that is um, heat shields. I mean, you can you can analyze that to death, or you can just build it and fly it, which is kind of what we did. And then we find out, oh, it gets too hot over there, it's too thick over there. So we optimize it basically, and um, and uh, partly we could do this because the first stages we ended anyways, right? They would just come down, and uh, and we would just use them again. And then um, yeah, that's actually the other video. Um, this is this is basically how we learned and how to how to launch, uh, how to land something. Which in the beginning we didn't have the ability. That's not Tony, right? Okay, because it, it, it's just super annoying. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, and we landed initially just in the ocean and just tried to land in the water like this one, and um, and they always blew up. They would land in the water and just blow up. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, is one that actually pulled out. Uh, yeah, we terminated this one in flight. This one is in Texas in our test site, so it's all on our property, but it doesn't look very good. <laughs> um, I think this one. Oh, right, this one ran out. This one was not good. <laughs> Slightly too much lateral velocity. <laughs> And then this one was close. This was Jason, I think, Jason 3. And it was just, ah, uh, no. <laughs> and every time we did that, we had some work to do on the ship. So it, took, it took a lot of use, but not, it wasn't, yeah, there was a landing leg that didn't work. And. Actually, there were, there was, we just learned from time to time, every time, this was one that actually landed hard, and, and the ocean was, the weather was really crappy, but um, it actually made it home to the harbor. And I don't think we flew this again, but 
I was amazed on how it survived. It really, I mean, it went from left to right every time. A hard landing, not good. <laughs> At least right on the center. It was not side. Right, exactly. And that was the first land landing. So the thing that amazed me, this one was awesome because that had a lot of crosswinds. The thing that amazed me is that they actually allowed us to land on land after we only demonstrated one successful drone ship landing. We just did one, and then the next time we said, "I think we want to land on that." I said, "Okay." <laughs> so I was that was really, um, that was really amazing, and I, I'm still grateful to the uh, Air Force in that case um, that they let us do that, and, and it worked fine, worked great. So since then we've uh, landed. Let's see if I got this right. I think 28 boosters, and we've we we uh, flown again 15 or 16, I believe. Can we, you look like you know this better than me. <laughs> 16, yeah. 16 on Saturday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Saturday, um, that launch, by the way, is the first land landing in Vandenberg. So it's going to be cool because you can... And, and, by the way, it's a night launch. So it's a night launch that's with the sun just behind the horizon. So you will see the whole trace coming back. And um, it's similar It's similar in, at the, the Cape, but at the Cape, the sun doesn't come from the side. It comes basically, it goes right into it and comes back. And there's also no, there's no mega million city watching this on the from from the side. Yeah? In Los Angeles, there's 14 million people that will look at that and go, "Wow!" And, and all kinds of things will happen <laughs> when we when we um, when we perform that show. We did that once in uh, I think last December or something like that. Um, and, and I expect it to be somewhat similar. It's hard to predict. Yeah? Could be overcast too, but um, that's pretty unlikely actually. Okay, so just before we come to a close, is there a question from the audience? Two questions. Firstly, has your German accent helped you in your in your rocket engineering career? <laughs> and, and the second one is a technical one, actually. You're, you're going to re-enter from the Moon and Mars at about Mach 30. Can you cope, can your thermal protection system cope with that? So, first of all, yes, my German accent helped me. Um, I, Okay, yeah, so a little story on that too. I um, I used to do the press conferences for um, for the uh, NASA missions, and and there's but and I'm saying this there's, there's like four people. There's one NASA person. Um, there's typically somebody for the ISS or for the science, and then there's um, somebody from SpaceX and there's the brother the brother officer, because the brother is the most important part for the next launch, so they have the brother officer. So and I thought they picked me for my looks, and then I find out later they picked me for my accent. It really hurt me. <laughs> so um, the other side, um, uh, re-entry. I don't think the, the Mach number per se is actually that relevant. What's relevant is heat transfer, you know, how much heating rate you have. And the heating rate um, is largely a function of the velocity. You're, it's also, I think, your, your, your flight path angle is, I think, the max, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so velocity, and, and then obviously you know the, the the atmosphere itself. So I don't think the heat rate at Mars is higher than on Earth. Yeah, So I mean, we're used to the Earth because of Dragon. Yeah, Dragon does this all the time, and uh, the, the heat shield technology we have, as or P Pika X, is a I knew what PICA stands for one second, the possible phenolic, phenolic um, something, yeah? phenolic something, yeah. So, um, so um, that heat shield is, um, is is oversized and yes, exactly, it's on, it's on the on the on the on the, on the body. Um, that takes the brunt of the heat. Um, it really also depends a little bit on how the body is formed. Like on the rocket, it's not it's not great because you have this small area, fairly heavy weight behind it. The fairings on the other side are really um, like, a, like a piece of paper, sideways, very easy for them to get rid of the heat. So it's a little bit of other factors. Yes, we had we had fairings come down on, on like a, a thin layer of coal. Yeah. So it really depends a little bit more on what the, the actual load is. Sure, 
Sure. So sorry, we're running a bit short on time. No, it's all good. Um, I know that there is a couple of questions still. Um, there is the panel you're on tomorrow, so I guess all of your your questions could be uh, directed there or grab you during the conference while you're around. Um, just before I close, is there a specific advice you would be giving to any of the students present for their future career or for their future path? Okay. Um, so, one is never give up. Um, uh, at one point you can give up, but <laughs> just don't never give up. <laughs> the, the other thing is um, just question things that you, you get taught or that you hear. Yeah? Just ask yourself why is this actually working, for example, and just just keep on hoping why things are done in a certain way. Can they do? Can they get done in another way? Is there better ways to do this? Never stop asking that question. And, the, and that last, I think, to me personally, the question is always more important than the answer. If you have the right, if you know the, to ask the right question, you're actually on the right path to the answer. If you don't know the right question, you will never find the answer. That is very, very true. Thank you so much for coming by, and uh, have a nice day.